In the seventh part of this tutorial series, we are going to make it possible to add comments to the lessons. So the first thing we need then is to create a new database models for the comments. So if I open up the models.py in the course app, then at the bottom here we can create the model class and then the name which will just be comment, pass in models.model. And then here I want a reference to the course, so I can copy this foreign key from the lesson and rename this to comments. And I also want one reference to the lesson, so I can copy and place this one more time, rename this to a lesson and this to comments. So it's easy to get all of the comments for a specific lesson. All you need to replace this with lesson and I want to know the name for the one for the user who comments, so name equals models.char field, max length can be set to 100, and then the content, which will be a text field, models.text field, and I want to know when it was created. I think I can copy this from the course, but instead of having a date field, I want a date time field so I know the exact time it was posted and I also want to know who created it. So down here as I created by equals models dot foreign key user and the related name should also be comments here and if you delete user I also want to delete all of the comments so models dot cascade See here I get a little error because user isn't defined, so I need to import this at the top from django.contrib.auth.models import user. Then we can save this. So I need to go to the command line to update the, uh, the database. Stop this and say make migrations. And then python manage.py migrate. Great, so now we have the database model and we can run the server again. So then I can go back to the to-do list and set the first task to done. And then the next step is to create the form for the comment. This should be located in the course.view file. So we can open up that. And then here, whoops, to close these two. And then down here in the data array, I want a reference to the comment we are going to create. So here I want to create a new object comment and then one property for the name which can default be empty and one property content which will also be empty and then if I scroll up and find where we show the lessons then below here I want to show the form so here I say HR and then below I create a form tag form and when we submit this, I want to call a function called submit comment. And to do that, we need to listen to, to the submit event. And to do that, we say v-on colon submit. And then to prevent this from doing the default thing it's supposed to do, we say dot prevent. And then we submit the, or pass in the submit comment function name. And we can close the form tag. And I want one field here for the name, so div class field label class label and name, so the user know what to fill in. And then a div class control input type should be text, and then class input, so we get some styling from Bulma, and v model is comment.name. And this refers down to the object we created down here, to this one. So then I can close this div, and I can close this div. And I want to fix the indentation like that. And then I can copy this field, because the one for the content is almost identical. Just change the label to content. And then I want this to be a text area, so remove the type text and say text area class text area. V model should be content comment dot content. Then I can close the text area. And then I want one field for submit button. Dev class 
control and then button class button is link so it's a blue button double t submit now we can close that button we can close the div and that div so if i save now and go back i might get an error just want to refresh now i have it here perfect great so then i want to create the submit comment function so if i copy this scroll down and then below mounted lifecycle hook i create a new object called or a property called methods which is a list of functions or methods and then create a function console.log submit comment so i can test that this is working by clicking one of these lessons and click submit as so you can see down here you see submit comment nice and then we're going to use Axios to post this information back to the server. So if I go back to Visual Studio Code again, then down here we can say Axios and then dot post because we want to post this information at the back tick and then slash API slash v1 slash courses. Now we need to specify which course and that is dollar sign this.course.slug which refers to the course we are on and then the slug for this and add the curly brace there and one more variable for the lesson we are on now or the active lesson so this.active lesson.slug then curly brace slash so this is the url for the lesson and then down here is a dot then and create a fat arrow function by saying response equal and then and then the arrow bracket and then curly brace and then down here we can just say alert the comment was added and if there are any errors we can just show that in the console catch error another fat arrow function console.log error Nice, so that's everything you need to do there now. We also should reset the form. So then here we can say this.comment.name is empty and this.comment.content is also empty. And save. So then we need to fix the backend a little bit because we need a new view for adding the comments. So if you scroll up and find the course app and then the views.py file. Here we can create a new decorator or use a decorator API view. And this should only accept post requests. So if you try to get this address, you will get an error. Def add comment request course slug and lesson slug. And then we can get the information which, which we posted, which I forgot to add here actually. After this back tick, we can say can say comma and this dot comment so this will send the whole object this one so then we can save this again and go back to the views.py file and then to get the data we say data equals request dot data and to get the name we say name equals data dot get so we get this from this object name and content equals data dot get content and then we want to get the course from the backend just to see that it actually is a course you're trying to post to. So copy this, paste it, just rename this to course slug and paste it below to get the lesson as well. Lesson.object and this should be lesson slug. And then we can create the comment by saying comment equals comment which is the database model which we need to import so just append it at the end of this list dot objects dot create course equals course and lesson equals lesson name equals name and content equals content the created at will be added automatically since we use the auto now add true function. 
Then we just need to set the created by user here. So created by equals request dot user. And when that's done, we can say return response. And here we can just say message. Oops, curly brace first. Then add a property message. The comment was added. Just so we can see this in the console. Then we can save this. Now we need to import this to the URL's py file. So we can open up this. And then copy this. Paste it. Rename this slug to course slug. And we can copy this. Paste. Rename this to lesson slug. And the view we are going to use here is of course add comment. Then we can save and test everything. So if I now refresh here, select a lesson, then we can say name, Stein, content, hello, submit. Then I got a 500 error from the server. You can see what that is. Created by must be a user instance. Okay, I, I'm actually authenticated, so there's something else wrong with the settings for this project. So if I just go to one of my older projects, I can fix this. If I just find the invoice lane. I need to copy these lines because I need to set the REST framework authentication permissions. So if I now go back again to settings.py, can paste this here. And you now see that I require that we use the token authentication and that the permission is authenticated. I think if I save now, go back to the study net, click submit, then now the comment was added. Perfect. So now there are no errors here either. So then it's time to go back to the to-do list to set this task to done. And then the last task for the day is to show comments on the lesson page. And to show comments we need to first create a new serializer for the comments. So find serializer.py. I can begin by importing comment here. And then we create a new serializer class comment comments serializer pass in serializers.model serializer. We need to add a class meta for configuration. Model is the comment. And the fields we want here is ID and the name the content and when it was created, created at. So we can save this. We can create a new view for getting the comments. So if I copy this name, go to views.py and import it here together with the other serializers. Then we can create a new view. Passing API view, pass in get here because we only want to get comments. Then def get comments request and then I also want the course slug and the lesson slug here. And then I want to get the lesson from the database. I can copy this line down here. And then we we'll say serializer equals comments serializer. And we pass in lesson.comments.all. Then we get all the comments belonging to this particular lesson. Many equals true. And then just return response serializer.data. Great. So then we just need to import this to the URLs. So here we can copy this line and append here get dash comments. And the views is get comments. Great. So I can save that. And then we can go back to the course.view file. So here in the data array, I want to add one more list, comments, which is a list object. And then to get these comments, I'll get the comments for a lesson. When we click a lesson, we need to change the functionality for this a little bit. Because right now we just set the active lesson up here, but I want to create a function which does this for us. So here we can remove this and say set active lesson. Now we pass in the lesson in this list. 
So I'll just copy this, scroll down to methods, and below submit comment, you can paste this. And then here we say this dot active lesson equals lesson. And then below here we create a function call this dot get comments like that. And we can create one more function here get comments. And we could get all of these comments at the same time as we get the course, but to make it easier or faster, we want to get the comments only for the active lesson. So down here, I can create or I can copy this and then paste it here. I rename this to get because we don't want to post anything here. And then at the end here, we said get dash comments and a slash. And then at the next line where we get the response, we said dot then response fat arrow function console dot log response dot data just so we see what we get there. Now we can say this dot comments equals response dot data and save. So now we can see if this is working. Refresh, click lesson one. Then we can see here that we got the list. And inside this list, we had one object with comment I just added. Great. So then I just want to show the comments above this lesson. And to show a comment, I want to use the media object from Bulma. So I just want to copy a few things here. First, the article class. So if I just scroll up and find the form. Then below the HR, article class media. And we need a div class media content and a div class content like that. And then a paragraph and strong. And then we can show who created this by saying comment.name. Close that one. And then after here, we can show when it was created. So comment.created at. Now we can close the paragraph. And we can close this content, this div, and this article. And then at the next line, after they created it, we can show the content of the comment by saying comment.content. Right now we are not looping through anything here, so we need to fix that here in the article class media. So below here we see v-4 comment in comments. And then v dot bind colon key, so it's a unique or element comment dot id and save. So if I go back now, hopefully you should see the comment added there. Nice. You can also add a class box to this media so we get a little shadow around it. Great. So then I can go back to the to do list again. And set this task to done. So now we have the possibility to add comments as well to our courses. And that was it for this video. If you liked it, please click like below. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below and answer as soon as I can.